Greetings everyone, Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another edition of Classic Album Rewind. Today we're going to take a look at an album released on September 9th, 1982 on the Anthem label. Of course, we are talking about Signals from Canada's very own Rush. All right, so the whole point of uh, this series this month is to like, take a look at these classic albums that uh, from very classic bands that kind of followed an album that most of us deem even more classic. So in this instance, Moving Pictures is the big massive album, right? And uh, this one followed in the footsteps, sold pretty well. Most people still really love this album a lot. It's considered uh, you know, a definite Rush classic, kind of uh, perhaps the album that started their move into different kind of music for the 80s, right? I think you got hints of that. On, certainly on permanent waves and moving pictures but then this is the probably the first album where most of those really keyboard heavy more melodic sounds uh, would come from the band and continue on through grace under pressure power windows so on and so forth so uh, really good album recorded at uh, Le Studio in Morin Heights Quebec right and uh, you know again the start of the really keyboard heavy um, years for the band Rush. Of course, we've got uh, Alex, Getty, and Neil on board. Starts off here with a very cool song called Subdivisions, which uh, has always been a favorite track of mine. Subdivisions, uh, you know, of course, got the, the synths in the beginning. Um, kind of heavy, atmospheric song, right? It's definitely very, very memorable. Great chorus. Um, Cool guitar solo from Alex, little synth stabs from Getty. Uh, love the big finale of the song. It, it's definitely a uh, top shelf Rush, Rush song, without a doubt. Uh, from there, we go to the Analog Kid, right? Um, for me, Analog Kid is probably the most representative of the Rush music from the past couple of years, but you still have plenty of synthesizers in the song. Uh, very melodic vocals, soothing vocals almost from Getty on the chorus, right? But just a terrific, terrific song. Uh, there we go to Chemistry. Again, highly melodic. Good riffing in the song from Alex. Tasty guitar solo. Lots of lots of atmospheric keyboards, right? Kind of there's like there's like a kind of like a spacey sound to a lot of the songs on this record, which again kind of go and you know coincide with uh, a lot of the lyrical content of a lot of the songs. And then of course uh, you've got uh, finishing off side A, you've got Digital Man, which you know is a very very cool song. Good chorus kind of have uh you know you got a couple spots on this album you get those kind of very different style rhythm guitar patterns from alex lifeson again you know the band seemingly very influenced by the music of the police you got these kind of big kind of uh chordal patterns chord voicings little bits of reggae mixed into the the heavier rock riffs Okay, very different, very different music from the band. I know myself personally, when this album first came out, I was a little shocked by this album because it is so different from this, the albums that came before. But, you know, over the years, uh, this has aged very well, in my opinion. Side two, all right, you got, uh, you know, side one has always been the more, just kind of like moving pictures. Side one was the more memorable part of this album. Songs you heard on the radio for the most part. Um, with the exception of New World Man coming up, uh, also a lot of the tracks that they played live. But side two, definitely the more proggy, the more keyboard heavy part of the album. You've got The Weapon, which is part two of Fear. Okay, Fear, a bunch of different Fear songs in this whole storyline there. Uh, Weapon, really cool, cool track. All right, great vocals from Getty, very haunting. Um, you've got New World Man, which is without a doubt my least favorite song on the album uh very playful poppy kind of song but it's got that great bass line from getty right it's definitely a catchy tune definitely a catchy tune but i remember the first time i heard that uh that song i think they released that before the album came out and i was kind of like wow that's that's a little different right then you've got uh, losing it pretty mellow track all right, definitely dreamy, atmospheric, very melodic. You've got that really cool uh, violin 
passage right from Ben Mink from uh, Canada's FM, cool prog band. Uh, definitely adds a nice flavor to it. A lot of sense in this song. You know, side two of this album, especially the less riffy. Uh, you've got uh, Alex doing all, like I said, all these really cool chord patterns and the occasional, you know, interesting flashy solo. But uh, this this is not a big guitar album. But it's okay because you, it just everything kind of works quite fine on this. And then, of course, speaking of keyboards and synthesizers, you got Countdown, which uh, is just littered with that. Uh, you got all the little um, narrative and pre-recorded parts, you know, from news news items and things like that. Um, Countdown, very cool song, great lyrics on this entire album, actually. Um, but really effective use of uh of all of getty lee's synthesizers here but you know in fact probably more so on countdown than on a good chunk of the rest of the uh, songs on the album but uh very very different sounding album for them this is the album that basically kind of paved the way for what we would hear on grace under pressure and the previous albums, or the albums, I should say, that come, the successive albums, not previous albums. Power Windows, Hold Your Fire, Presto, all that stuff throughout the rest of the 80s, where the guitar takes a backseat to all these, like, kind of layers and um, colorings of the synthesizers. All right. Great drumming from Neil throughout, of course. Uh, Getty's vocals are also starting to take on, you know, more of like a mid-range and not all the, the kind of shriek and high range from the earlier, the high-pitched stuff from the earlier albums. But um, it kind of works, right? It's just a different era for Rush. And I think there are a lot of people who came on board with this band in this era. So, you know as opposed to the folks who came on board with Rush from the very beginning, the heavier stuff, the more the real kind of complex, heavy prog rock stuff from the 70s, bordering on metal at times, right? Now this is kind of the anti that. So here we have uh, very lush arrangements and, uh, you know, use of pop hooks and, you know, the little textured guitar riffs and the little bits of reggae here and there. And uh, it's prog rock. It's definitely not heavy prog rock anymore, all right? But it's still quite amazing uh, you got terry brown working on uh production for the album sounds great sounding album uh you got that interesting little album cover there right it's very kind of futuristic looking all right everything about it just signals a new direction signals a new direction for the band so that is uh my classic rewind for today rush signals let us know what your thoughts are on this uh, very cool but very different album in the history of rush which uh again like i said was the bridge to uh the rest of the albums released during this decade and in the 90s they decided to mix things up once again uh, as rush always seems to do every decade or so so this is on the web at www.ctranquility.org we're on facebook we're on twitter of course we're here on youtube all the damn time thanks for watching we will have another one tomorrow morning and each and every day throughout the month of june uh stay tuned tonight for the monsters den we've got part three of our look at the cool cult 80s film spookies we've got uh, a handful of folks uh, who appeared in that film in various different roles uh, you know, we've got some of the, the muck men, some of the main stars of the film. They're all going to be talking about their experience working on that uh, classic, classic, really fun, but very bizarre film back in the uh, mid 80s. So stay tuned for that tonight, along with Rich Catino, Chris Sallow, Dan Brown and myself and a uh, bunch of people from Spookies. And uh, stay tuned for that. Lots more here on the channel. we got Martin Popoff back in the house tomorrow morning for another fun show at the Fun House. And uh, I am Pete Pardo and uh, we'll see you real soon. Take care. Bye bye.